All right, it's reading 137 this morning, about 8 o'clock. Uh, barely even had it full last night. Um, here's kind of the plumbing. Here's my uh, outlet. This is going to our big shop, our big uh, 4,800 square foot shop. We got the pump mounted here instead just because we're still working on electrical. Um, so we're just pumping the loop and it's coming back. This is where the return line is. This is the, the feed line. And then here's what we got. I got a teed off going to the house and going to our small shop. Um, got handles everywhere. So I can shut everything off, kind of isolate it and uh, fix a pump if I need to or whatever. I've also got this Inkbird thermometer. This is like a smoking thermometer. Um, and I can I can uh, check the temperature on my phone wherever I'm at. Hooked up to Wi-Fi, so it's kind of slick. And I can just plug it right in there. There's plug-ins here for pumps, so I just use that. But yep. So we're pumping out of the top and then recirculating down from the bottom, so it should be stirring everything. But here's all my pipes. I got them all buried underground. Uh, three pipes going to three separate buildings. You know, I just got the cheap stuff. Uh, the three ply insulated field tile. Um, I think it was at the time half, maybe a third of the price. And uh, but that stuff just keeps going up in price. So it works pretty good. Probably need to touch up some of my connections. It's actually not leaking too bad. Just when it's really, really cold, everything will shrink and and just leak a little bit, but I've never really seen any water running, so I probably need to touch that up. But yeah. So what I'm running here is a central boiler 7260. I believe it's the biggest classic boiler they make. Uh, yeah, it's been good. I've had it for about a year now, so had it hooked up last year about this time. Um, just fired it up a couple weeks ago. We're starting to smoke here. It's a pretty big unit. I believe there's 700 gallons of water, but don't quote me on that. She'll be puffing smoke here soon. So there's our big shop. We have this hooked up, as you saw. Uh, I'm not heating it all the time just because it's not insulated yet. So I'll show you guys how that's all set up. So as you can see, I got two, two 200,000 BTU units here in the shop. I can feel the heat coming off of them. Um, just got one line running through them all. Uh, this one's first, this one's second. I might plumb it up different, kind of messing with that, but most of the heat comes out of this first one. It sucks most of that heat out. And uh, yeah, I can, this shop's about three fourths insulated. I can heat the whole thing in, oh, I don't know, half an hour I can get it up to 50, 55 degrees. Yesterday I had it up to 60, no problem. Uh -huh. Works pretty dang good. But this is just a temporary setup. Until I get my walls done, I'll hang them from the walls or the ceiling somewhere. Also got an Inkbird controller here that I'm working, that I'm using this so I can, I don't have it set up yet, but I can work it on my phone. I just got a new app, so I'm, I gotta get that going, but. Just a thermometer, and uh, you can change the temp right here. Pretty slick. So, you know, it's, it's 40 in here overnight. Uh, really not bad. It'll warm up here in a little bit. I might get her cranking if I'm rolling. So, and here's the shop I'm heating. Uh, we'll give you guys a tour here soon. 
I'll get some light in here and pretty good size space. You can see one wall isn't insulated yet. I got to get that put up. So, but it's, it's a shop. We're working. Okay. We're here in a small shop, uh, where we got that 50,000 BTU unit. Um, just running one single coil here. Uh, one little pump. That's actually a big pump. Uh, running this Inkbird controller next to my phone. I can just change temperature right here too manually. So usually like keep it in the winter. I'll keep it here 75 all winter. So there you have it. Also running this hot dog propane heater as well. This is my backup propane. That way, if anything happens, I've still got heat in the little shop. Um, I guess I don't have my tank hooked up right now, but um, plan on it. So we got a fan right here on the door. Some of the small boilers don't run these. They just have uh, little doors that open. But this one's got a nice big fan. It's been upgraded. Uh, I can't remember the... I'll put the link in the bio on this fan. Um, but... Yeah, it just blows my air right in there. Probably fill it up a little bit more, but... Smoking pretty good. Probably also need to replace my seal. But this this boiler's been run for, man, I don't know if he said 20 or 25 years. So it's a pretty old unit. Uh, I patched it up a little bit when I got it, and he did it before that too, but it's still working pretty good, hopefully for lots of years to come. So we got a sawmill, right? So I've got lots of lots of chunks. Heck, this is wet wood. This is probably 40 plus percent. You know, I'm not needing much heat right now, so I can throw some of that water stuff in to get rid of it. And with that big fan, that'll uh, give me enough air flow that I can burn this wet stuff. So here's kind of lay of the land. We got the boiler over there, right in the middle. Um, heating that garage shop, that's my wood shop. Um, heating the house, I got lines running to the house, hooked up in, in the basement, I'll show you that. Oh, it's about 100 foot. Um, I just have a pipe running to this little shop, that's only like 20 foot. And then I got another 100 foot or so, run to the big shop. Um, But yeah, it's all pretty tight, but far enough away, you gotta run some line. Okay, don't mind our nasty old basement, but uh, here's the setup down here in the house. You can see, it's pretty simple. Uh, I just bored a hole in the concrete here. Big, thick concrete walls down here in the basement. And, uh, Put her in there, spray foamed. I put a bunch of, I think I used some quick creed or something on the outside. Just kind of try to seal it off. Really don't have a problem with water getting in unless like downpours for like five days straight. Then I had a little bit leaking in, but it's really not that big a deal. Um, but I do have a 90 on all these pipes coming in. Maybe I shouldn't have. Uh, I suppose I could always fix that. I've got enough room. But yeah, I just got the pump mounted. Probably should go a little lower, but um, you know, it works pretty good. This is the only place I did have problems with uh, cavitation in my lines, where it wouldn't suck suck the water in. Rob and I first set it up, but 
once I got it purged. Uh, it's been pumping pretty good here lately. So hot water. Here is where I fill. This is my fill valve. I got it on the return. Um, as you can see, I also have thermostats on the return and supply. Same thing I have out in the boiler. That's this little ink bird. Um, as you can see, still working on getting that fire, heat up that water, but she's gaining. But yeah, I just pretty much have a backflow valve right here. Really cheap one, it works pretty good. Um, teed off and I can open this up and I can attach the hose to my, to my sink down here and pump in water to uh, fill it back up. So uh, everybody says you don't want to have one of these pumps in your house, but I don't know, it's really not that loud. Um, it doesn't bother me at all. We never even hear it. So down here in the basement. So I just have the lines run up here on the ceiling. Hot water heater. So should be able to hook up a sidearm or something to be able to heat my hot water since it's going right past. Um, I just haven't got that far yet. So, okay, don't mind the mess. <clears throat> this is my uh, clock shipping room. <laughs> but, uh, so here's our furnace. Uh, as you can hear, it is running right now. We are pumping water constantly. This is how I have it set up. Uh, and I've got an aquastat set up on the side of this. So it tells me, I have it set for, you can see, 90 degrees. So if my water gets cooler than 90, then I have it wired up down here in the furnace that my propane will kick on and I'll start, start heating with propane heat. Um, it's seamless, I don't have to touch it, I don't have to worry about it. Um, sometimes in the middle of winter, you know, our wood stove runs out in the middle of the night, four o'clock in the morning or something. Well, this will just keep heating our house. Um, if that water temperature gets too low in the boiler and don't have to worry about it. It's really slick. Uh, I know there's a lot of different ways to do this, but I only run one thermostat and, and this. So you can see how it's kind of set up. I just put the coil, I cut the side out, and I slid the coil right in there into the furnace, right above the AC coils. And I'm running kind of my water through, my hot water. But I've got a, I can kind of adjust the flow with my bypass here. It works pretty good. I think I do have too many, too many 90s in this system, but, um, you know, brick wall right there. So I'm doing what I can, but it works pretty good. Pretty happy with it so far. The house is probably, probably the best part about this system is I have my house set up with this heater. Um, so, you know, this house has always been hard to get. It's an old farmhouse. So it's always hard to get actually warm in the winter. Um, you know, we've done it for years, heating with propane, but it adds up and it's never really that warm but now i can heat this house with uh with my wood boiler and heck we heat it to 75 degrees uh all winter long and the only time I couldn't quite keep up with heating the that wood shop and this house was last year it got down to like negative 20 for like a couple days and everybody was having problems i mean not just us uh i had to get up and and feed the boiler a couple times in the middle of the night, but um, you know, it was okay. It's really not normally that bad. Um, there's another view of that system, but so here's what that that system I have in the in the furnace looks like. Uh, it's just a big coil. It kind of looks like a radiator. Funny story. This is actually the first one I bought. Uh, looks brand new, obviously, because it is. Um, a couple of these joints on here, they were leaking. You can see they're all soldered. Um, they were leaking from the factory. And uh, all I did was call them up and told them, you know, got it all hooked up, but I sprung some leaks. 
and they sent me a new one for free uh, right away same week so they're great this is uh i bought most of my supplies from badger pipe and i'm gonna link them here in the description uh great to work with you know their prices are very fair the system can cost a lot of money um but i got it done kind of on the budget because i did it all myself and i bought from places like this that were just fair price on everything they sell and they pretty much had everything i needed right there on their webs yeah that's kind of what that looks like you can see here your uh, hot goes on one side flows through the whole system and comes out the other side so pretty simple really you know we're running hot water through the one in the furnace we're just pumping constantly is how we have it set up so so here's my thermostat i'm using for the house works pretty good i got it set to 74 i guess it's it's about 40 degrees outside right now so um but i've got this hooked up to my phone so i can if i'm gone during the day i can tell it to turn up turn down but i'm only running one thermostat which is the benefit to running that aquastat downstairs in the furnace so okay here's my <clears throat> diagram for my whole system you can see if you've been following along here in this video uh we're heating about i think i added it up it's about 8500 total square feet when i'm heating everything but here's our main boiler here um just running a pipe here underground to the small shop very short run got one trenched all the way behind the small shop into the house and then one trench to the big shop um, kind of shows you the setup here and I think these are about a hundred foot runs I think I maybe they're 150 I think I bought about 300 total feet of that pipe um, that was one of the bigger costs of this whole system all right here it is final cost on all this setup obviously I didn't charge myself labor but uh, give you kind of a rundown 500 bucks in gravel 900 in concrete, 1500 just for the boiler, about 1500 for the insulated pipe, uh, over 4500, 4600, and all the parts. It's the heaters, the pumps, the PEX, all that. And uh, paid the neighbor 300 bucks to help me weld it. So, all in all, it was 9000 probably $9,500 to install this whole system. And I think it probably paid for itself the first year. So, thanks you guys for watching. Uh, I enjoyed building this system. First time I've ever done anything like this. I am not a plumber. I'm a woodworker and a welder. Uh, just thought it'd be fun to do this. We've got a lot of buildings to heat, and I've got wood coming out of my ears. So, that's not really been the issue. Um, you know, it took us probably. In that first video you saw until the end it was probably three years two and a half years of work off and on just kind of when i had time on the weekends and stuff and uh when i had tools you know i saved a lot of money using my uh, dad's uh, trencher and skid loader and neighbors got a crane to help me set it and the guy i got the boiler from gave me a good deal so you know on a budget thousand dollars for the system brand new if you had to buy everything brand new and pay somebody to do it I don't know if it'd be 40 50 thousand maybe you bought everything brand new so um, it's working all right for me so we enjoy it thanks for watching check out my website if you get a chance uh, appreciate you guys see ya